Microsoft is a tech giant, and for some time now, they have been one of the world's most admired companies. And every single year, they get about 2 million applicants. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you're applying and interviewing for a role at Microsoft, you're going to face stiff competition. By watching this video, however, you will give yourself a distinct advantage because throughout the entirety of this video, I'm going to give you actual Microsoft interview questions, and then I'm going to teach you how to answer them so that by the end of this video, you'll be ready to absolutely crush your interview and land a job with Microsoft. Let's go. Hi everybody, my name is Ben White with Ben Talks Talent. I've got 12 years experience in interviewing, hiring, and recruiting, and I am passionate about using my experience to help you become the best candidate possible, maximize your career, and land your next job. In today's video, I am going to profile Microsoft. Microsoft is one of the most requested companies I've had for me to go out there and profile and I'm finally getting around to it. So we are going to cover everything today from their company values and how you can incorporate that into your answers, actual interview questions and answers. And then I'm actually gonna go over some of the tech questions you might get asked if you were interviewing for a technical role. So stay tuned all the way to the end. But before we get into that, real quick, if you are new here, take three seconds, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell. That way, you never miss one of my videos, and if you are not new, welcome back. All right, let's get into the video. Now, like I just said, we're gonna go over a few things in this video. We're going to talk about, one, their values. Microsoft has corporate values, and it makes sense to know what these are so you can incorporate them into your answer and be familiar in case you're asked about them. We're also gonna go through a list of confirmed interview questions. And I'm going to give you the interview question, and then I'm going to show you how to answer them. And then finally, I'm going to go through some of the technical questions that are confirmed that they ask in your interview. I am not going to teach you how to interview um, or how to answer those because I don't know how but I will absolutely tell you what they are and I will put them in the description box below. So make sure when you're done with this video, go there, copy those, paste those into a Word doc, Google them and figure out how to answer them yourself. Um, trust me, you don't want me helping you with those. All right, let's start talking about the values. Now, Microsoft has three values. I'm going to put on the screen um, the website URL so you can actually go to their website and read through because while I'm going to tell you their three corporate values, you're going to want to read the definitions. Most companies, when they establish corporate values, also specifically define what they mean to them. Microsoft is no different. Now, their three corporate values are as follows, respect, integrity, and accountability. Um, those are great values, and as we go through some of these questions and answers, you're gonna see that there's an opportunity to weave those values into some of the answers. So, with that being said, those are the values. That's the website. Go there and read through it. I would personally recommend doing that every single time you're about to interview with Microsoft. So do it before your phone interview, do it before a hiring manager interview, do it before a paneling interview. Make sure you familiarize yourself with their values. Now, let's get into the first interview question. Now, the first question is actually a really common one for a tech company, and it's, do you use Microsoft products or services? If so, what is your favorite and why? Um, when we were, uh, I did a profile for Apple, so I did the exact same thing. If you haven't watched that, I would recommend going and watching that when this is done. And they asked the exact same question, and these are pretty straightforward. And when they ask you this, there's not a right or wrong answer in terms of the specific product you use. However, what they are looking for is they're looking for you to express passion and knowledge um, about the products. Another benefit to answering this interview question is because it is very open-ended. Um, they're just asking you what your favorite product is. Um, so you could actually use this as an opportunity to incorporate it into selling yourself. For example, if you're in a role that would require very strong Excel skills, you could say Microsoft Excel. And then you could talk about how instrumental it is for you in your day to day and how you're able to leverage your skills to be more effective in the roles that you've done in the past and in the role that you're um, applying for. So again, the, the key here isn't a specific one is right and one is wrong. It's knowing what you're going to say and using it as an ability um, or a platform to sell yourself um, in addition to saying which one of these things is your favorite. Now this next interview question is really cool and it's one of those questions that Microsoft has asked for years. However, I could see more companies asking this moving forward because of the state of the world and that question is, how do you build and maintain functional relationships with colleagues in other locations? Um, Microsoft is a global company. In addition to that, before the world became remote, um, they had remote positions. So being able to build relationships with people you don't get to bump into at work has always been key for them. And what they're looking for is people who emphasize 
um, being able to do that. So when you're giving this answer and you're talking to them, you wanna emphasize the importance of communication. Communication is really important to Microsoft. So talk about how you put effort into communicating and going the extra mile to connect with people who may not be in the same building with you. You could talk about using Microsoft Teams and creating a way to create a visual connection. Pretty straightforward question in my opinion, but it is important here um, to talk about respect, to talk about taking that extra step and valuing communication between colleagues and understanding that because they are global, this is going to be of key importance. So make sure you talk about how you've done this in the past, how you're familiar with doing it. If you can reference how you've worked with people in different locations previously, so you're comfortable with this and it's something you excel at, that's going to be a key to answering this in a strong fashion. The next Microsoft interview question um, is a good one and it's, it's one of those that you could expect at a tech company to get frequently. And it's what do you do to keep your skills current? Um, they are looking for you being intentional here, right? Because the role is dynamic in all likelihood and there's going to be changing and evolving technology, they want to know that not only you're just showing up, but you're going above and beyond to make sure you are sharpening your sword and you are ready to evolve as the technology you work within is, is evolving. So um, what I would do is I would just tell them that, you know, and however you answer this, you wanna express a willingness and an interest in learning. You know, that's something that motivates you. You love the fact that the technology you work with is evolving and you are a lifelong learner. Um, and you are intentional and you have a plan to continue to learn as things evolve. As long as you can do those things and just say, you know, that that's something you are active and interested in, I think this should be fine, but just make sure you're intentional, you tell them about your plan and how you specifically have done this in the past. If you can reference how you've previously done this with the technology you have worked with, you're going to satisfy answering this interview question. Now this next interview question is a very common one. Um, in the past, I have profiled Apple, I have profiled Netflix, I have profiled Tesla, and I have profiled SpaceX. Um, check out my playlist for company specific interview guides to watch those, but they have all asked this question. They all do. And you should literally, anytime you go into an interview with a company, you want to be able to answer this. And the question is, why Microsoft, right? And it should be easy. It should be easy for you to tell them why you want to come work here. And here is the key to answering this interview question. I call it the 50-50 rule. And the 50-50 rule specifically applies to this interview question and this interview question alone. 50% of it should be why the company is interesting to you. So you could talk about uh, their, corporate, their corporate ethics, you can talk about their corporate values, you can talk about their products, right? Those things are inspiring to you. The other 50% should be role specific. It's things you are going to be doing in this role. So I always recommend that when you apply for a role, you save the, uh, the job description on your computer. That way you can reference it prior to going into interviews. Um, and you can reference it in interview questions like this, but the second half of your answer needs to be role specific. You need to be talking about things that are high priority um, in your role. So think about the first and second bullet points in terms of your daily responsibilities that you see in the job description. It should be something connected to that. If you could do those things and you can strike a balance between why the company is interesting and why the role is interesting, you are going to crush this interview question. Now this next interview question is one of those that falls into the category of as long as you know it's coming, and you're prepared for it, you're probably going to do well. And that question is name an application with UI that you admire. What about it do you appreciate? So that's user interface. If you're watching this video, I probably don't need to explain that to you. Um, but again, this is just one of those questions where there's not really a wrong answer. The only wrong answer is not having an answer and not being able to speak to it eloquently. Like what about the user interface is appealing to you? What do you like about it? Um, as long as you can do that, this one's pretty much probably gonna be easy. This next question is really um, interesting to me. Uh, and it's something that I think if you work in sales or customer service or program management, you might run into. And that's if a sales rep in your department um, gave a valued client an incorrect sales quote, how would you remedy the issue? I think it's really important here when you answer this question to talk about your process, right? Walk them through what you would do to resolve the issue. So to me, first step is talking to the salesperson, figuring out, hey, why did this happen? getting on the same page with them and then making sure it doesn't happen again. And then second place would be taking care of the client, knowing that they value these relationships and they wanna serve their clients. What are you gonna to do to rightfully serve them? You know, I would say in most circumstances, depending on the size of the agreement, it's honoring what you said. 
And if it's something where that's not appropriate, maybe it's some huge deal that's going to be over a large course of time, maybe it's explaining to them the mistake and walking through a solution with them. But I think key here is showing them your thought process and what you would specifically do to address it in a fair way that one, shows you're a good teammate capable of communication and respecting your colleagues, and second, shows you putting the client first and serving them in a respectable way. Now this next question gives you an opportunity to reference one of Microsoft's values, right? We talked about their values earlier today, um, and I, I stated the importance of including them in your answers because it shows to them that you're in value alignment. Remember, there's 2 million applicants to Microsoft. It's not good enough to be a technical fit. You have to be a value fit as well. So when you're answering their interview questions, you wanna make sure that you're intentional about in, uh, including some of their values. So the question itself is, tell me about a time you had a difficult relationship with a colleague. What did you do to ensure any challenges were resolved? Right, so first and foremost, tell me about a time when means this is a behavioral interview question, meaning you need to solve it with a STAR method. Situation, task, action, result. So tell them about the situation. What was the task you were tasked with, you were responsible for? What was the specific action that you took? And then what was the resolution? What was the result? What happened? That is a framework for you to answer this question. But as you look at actually answering this question, it's important to incorporate respect, right? Maybe you had a disagreement with um, your teammate. That happens. But how do you, as a good teammate, resolve this? So I would start off with saying something like, you know, I think, this is something that can happen in the workplace. You know, if you're working with passionate people who have different opinions, occasionally you may butt heads or have um, different resolutions to a problem. But I think it's also really important to respect your colleagues and work towards resolution. So in the past when this happened, and then go into it with the STAR method, but set that foundation in talking about how this happens, but resolution is important and you need to respect the people you work with and work towards solving the issue. This is going to make you not only appear to be a value fit, but it's going to show you being a good teammate. Both of these things are really important to Microsoft. Now this next question um, is a common question and it's a question people get wrong a lot and it's easy to get it wrong. So I'm going to tell you how to not get it wrong. That question is, um, what do you hope to find in your next position? It's so simple here. It has to be something you're going to be doing in your next role. When people get this question uh, wrong, what they do most commonly is they talk about something that's exciting to them, but they won't have it in their next role. Remember, anytime you're answering any of these interview questions, you're not just answering them as you, the candidate, you're answering them as a candidate from Microsoft. So you need to think about them and what they want to hear. So when they say to you, what do you hope to find in your next position? Absolutely, unequivocally, it has to be something in that job description, something that you would be excited about, something that represents growth or opportunity or a place for you to show your skills and something you're specifically good at and it has to be in the job description. If it's something that you might not be doing in that role, you cannot say it. Um, again, think about it from their perspective. Imagine you're the recruiter, imagine you're in HR, or imagine you're the hiring manager. And you go, hey Ben, what do you wanna be doing in your, in your next role? And the candidate answers it, and it's something they absolutely will not be doing in their next role. That could be a huge problem, and they might not move forward with you just based on that alone. So make sure it's something included in the job description. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the, um, the technical interview questions. And I wanna emphasize one thing very clearly here. I am not qualified to answer these questions, so I won't be doing that, but I will be walking you through them and giving you pointers, not on the technical specification, but on the things that are important as you go to answer them. And here's what I'd like to do. I'm gonna put these questions in the description box. So go down there and check them out when this video is done, but also in the comments. In the comments, if you have the answer, write the answer down there. That way other people can benefit from your knowledge. Um, if you look at my Tesla video, if you look at my Apple video, um, there's a lot of technical questions included and SpaceX too. And people who actually watch the video, they've shared the answers in the comments. We are all here because we wanna better ourselves. We wanna land that amazing job. I'm doing this to help you out you could probably help somebody else out who's watching this video. So when you're done, go down, look at the questions in the description box, and if you are capable of answering them, answer them in the description box so you can help, or excuse me, in the comments, that way you could help uh, somebody else. All right, 
let's get into the questions. Now, the first question is, what steps would you take to correct a slow startup issue on a computer running Windows 10? Um, think about this. I don't know the answer, but when you think about how you wanna answer this, who would you need to explain this to? You'd probably need to explain this to somebody who isn't a technical person. So using the language here, you wanna make sure you're not making any assumptions about what they do or don't understand. Explain it in simple, understandable language to somebody who is not technical. If you can do that and you have the right answer, asterisk, you have to have the right answer, you'll do well in this interview question. Now the next uh, technical question is explain uh, recursion uh, in a way that a non-technical person would understand, kind of similar to the one I just said. Um, explain it simple and in a thorough way to somebody who does not have a foundation of technical knowledge in simple language so that they could go, ah, okay, I get it. If you do that, then you'll succeed in answering this interview question. Now, the next question is, what is a stack? Um, I'm like tempted to take a crack at this because I actually do. Um, have a lot of clients who recruit um, who or who need us to recruit in, in the technical space, um, but I'm not going to, just in case. I don't want to sound stupid, but what is a stack? You should probably, I mean, if you're watching this and you're interviewing for a technical role, you're probably like, Ben, that is the easiest question to answer. Um, good. The next question is, how would you write a script that reversed the contents of an array? I've got to be honest here. I know those are all words and I know they're all words in English, but when you put them together, I have no idea what they're talking about. So for me, if someone would explain that in the comments below, I would actually really love to know what that means. I'll probably Google it later, um, but do me a favor, explain that in the comments. I'd love to hear what that actually means because I have no idea. All right, the last uh, question. Um, if you had 90 seconds, how would you explain the cloud to someone who doesn't know what it means? Pretty simple here, you can probably explain the cloud, but here's the challenge, right? You need to do this in 90 seconds. So be thorough, be simple and concise with your language and do it in 90 seconds. And if you can do that, I'm sure you will do great. Well, there you have it. Um, this is everything I think you will need from a foundational standpoint to succeed interviewing with Microsoft. Now remember, Microsoft is an incredibly appealing company. They get 2 million applicants a year. Everybody you're going to be interviewing against is probably gonna be qualified, like you're qualified. How do you differentiate yourself? It's the cultural piece. It's coming off as a strong value alignment fit. It's coming off as a good teammate. It's coming off as someone who is respectful and meets the soft skills that Microsoft is seeking. But there you have it. Good luck in your next interview. You've got this.